The longer the farm is here, the more it stinks. I feel really sick. The stench is unbearable. In a month or two, they will be killed and skinned. Next year, they will be, their fur will be sold in the shops around the world. I want to take him with me. This fox was destined to be turned into jacket trim. But she got lucky. She was rescued by Pavel and his colleagues from the organization Open Cages. Now she lives with other foxes in the Poznan Zoo in Poland. We can clean it. I'm going with Pavel and Andre to document conditions in Poland's fur farms. Andre works for PETA, the world's largest animal rights organization. Is there anything we need to watch out for? We shouldn't draw attention to ourselves. We're going to be in the area a while. Most fur farmers don't want the public seeing or knowing what goes on in their farms. We don't want to be seen looking at one of the biggest farms, hence the back route. Most people think that fur farms like the one we're going to only exist overseas, in China and so on. But the fact is, the EU is a major fur producer. Is that it? That's the farm. Wow, it's huge. About 150,000 mink are kept here. Fur is in fashion. Pelt producers are gigantic farms like this. Security is tight, so it must look pretty bad inside. Fur is a thriving industry in Poland these days. The country is the second biggest producer in Europe, with annual turnover of nearly 400 million euros. That was me and even if there were controls by veterinarians, how are they going to check 150,000 animals? The farm is one huge animal rights nightmare. We'll see why in a moment. We try our luck on a smaller fur farm first. We need to be very careful. Take the guy we saw collecting mushrooms. We don't know what business he's in. He might decide we look suspicious walking around here. What could happen if he tells someone we're here? Um, I don't know. The worst that could happen is that he calls his friends and they wait for us back at the car. Has that happened? That's happened often. We've had our path blocked. And we also run into some trouble later. But for now, we're only having a look at this farm from the outside. It smells gross. Fur is associated with luxury, but this place is anything but. That red slop, by the way, is the meat waste they feed the animals. They're all cowering in the corner. They're not moving at all. No, they don't move. They're afraid. And you can tell that they're ill-adjusted to a life in a cage. They've got nowhere to go. All they can do is cower in the corner. Conditions on this farm are legal, in line with EU law. Still, the owner is not pleased to see us. Images of fluffy creatures in filthy cages are not good PR. This is private property. Okay. This is a public road. Okay, come. Get lost. What did you say to him? That we're making a documentary about fur farming, and we'd like to ask him some questions. Mm -hmm. He told us to get lost and that he called the police. And? He says he'll call the cops. I want to get out of here. I don't have Andre's nerves of steel. We head to a village where there's another heavily fortified fur farm. We meet Sabina who lives in the village. A farm like this is bad news not just for the animals, but for locals too. What's it like living with a farm like this that's right in your neighborhood? There are zillions of flies everywhere. It's almost like a plague. It stinks, and the value of our property has fallen 70 percent. But locals can protest all they like. These farms are legal, for now. Every now and again, Poland debates banning them. 
We obviously aren't going to get inside one during daylight, so we wait and try under cover of darkness. We stop to change on the way. I'm petrified. The others were here a few weeks ago, but the owner might have gotten dogs in the meantime, or have hired security guards. I guess we're about to find out. Sometimes I wonder why I do this sort of thing. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, but you might... This time Pavel comes with us to the farm. We'll go here to the wall and he will just make a little bit of noise just to check if there's anyone inside. Ah. So we wait here at the wall. Okay. Green, green, inside, everything okay. Well, God, it smells horrendous. If you open to this. How long do they stay in this cage? Uh, those foxes were born this May or June. And first they in the cage with their siblings and mother. And around August they are moved to a new cage. Yes. Like this. And they are here until November after the skinning. What's this? This bone, but it's supposed to be a toy. And this is the legal capacity of the cages. This is all, this is all legal. Yeah. Oh, look. What? I'd like to take him with me. This is a fox. Its fur would fetch about 60 euros on market. A mink sells for just 30 euros. This is a raccoon. Its fur would go for about 60 euros too. Raccoons need a lot of space and hibernate in winter. Their fur is often used to make bubble hats, the sort a lot of people wear on cold days. Look at how filthy it is, all the droppings. Oh. Can we take one with us? Well, if you have a place for that. No. It's really difficult to find a place for rescued foxes. So He's super afraid, right? You can mm. think that uh, if you go to the shopping mall in next year, you might see actual like clothing with that animal in the first room. Yes. So oh, that's that horrible. Animal, it's not something abstract. If you, because there is, it's not traceable, it's possible that the clothing you see in the shop near you, it's the animal that you meet today, for example. What is it? Like a stereotypical behavior. So it just means that mental problems make the fox or any other animal like that. Just trying in circles or keep moving like that with no purpose. And can go on like that hours sometimes. They can't walk normal. So it's really and you can see also the yes. legs. And you can see the same thing among the rest of the mm -hmm. I've seen footage, footage, but when you actually see it with your own eyes, it's overwhelming. The animals look so sad and frightened. The cages are so small and it stinks. It stinks bestialisch. There's excrement everywhere, and they're so cute. It's horrible. And this is only a small farm. It's nothing compared to some of the others. By the way, this is how the animals are slaughtered. Raccoons and foxes are electrocuted orally and anally to make sure their fur isn't damaged. Mink are gassed. I want to get out of here fast. I can't take it anymore. It's hard to say exactly where their pelts end up. Their coats are sorted by quality, not by provenance. And I'm about to face my own moment of truth. 
Andre, when I was researching this piece, I read that you can't always recognize what's fur and what isn't, and that it's not always labeled. So now I've got a really bad conscience, because I bought a coat last year with a fur trim. It's really hard to find coats with nothing on them. Now I'm really worried that it's real fur. I've brought the hood along. Okay, you don't need to worry. I can see straight off that this isn't real. But it's really fluffy, right? Yeah, it is. But there are tests you can do. Look here, for example. It's very thick, but if it were real, you'd see some dermis. But this is synthetic. Mm -hmm. So there's no skin. It's been glued onto something synthetic. Mm -hmm. And you can tell from the structure that it isn't real fur. And if you blow on real fur, a passage forms. But this stays stiff. Is it ever going to be real fur on a 60 euro coat? It could be, sure. Raccoon fur is very common. You might think it's not going to be real fur when you buy a cheap jacket, but that's not always the case. You often find real fur in that price range. You really need to watch out. EU regulation stipulates clothing with real fur must be clearly labeled, but compliance is low and mislabeling is frequent.